Who's that? Who's that, huh? Good boy, come. <laughs> He's so excited, wait. Okay, so the first thing is, go ahead and stay in position there. You can kind of see he's already jumping, right? So if he's that excited, you're going to want him to kind of calm down and refocus on you first. That's going to be the hardest part here, right? Whew. Come here, Pablo. Good boy. Sit. Good. All right. All right. It's okay. <laughs> I know. So what I'll do is hold on. <laughs> I know. Wait. Sit. Sit. I know. Good boy, sit. Okay, sit, wait. Now slowly go ahead and approach him and as he moves, then go ahead and stop, uh-uh, and then reset again. Uh-uh, sit. Uh-uh, there you go. And then you ask him to sit now. Or me? Uh-huh. Sit. Good. Now try to give his attention while he's still on the ground, and then if he pops up, go ahead and stop. There you go. There you go. And then stop and say no. Uh uh. Nope. Oh, you're all tangled up. Thank you. I need to untangle this so I can crack him. There we go. All right. So now, once again. See? Nah. There we go. Good. All right. So I'm just pulling him back and down, yeah, and you just down. engage and disengage, right? Okay. Sorry. Uh uh. <laughs> right. I know. There you go. Uh uh. Sit. Good. Now try to get to the have him to kind of get onto his side like that. There you go. And try to keep him that way too, so that way when he faces you, yeah. Good boy. No. Good. So now when he comes Please, by, don't jump me. <laughs> I tell you, the uh, the excitement of not seeing their parents is usually going to be a lot more. So when he's approaching you now, go ahead and ask him to sit. Okay. Perfect. There you go. And you can kind of see as mm -hmm. the excitement wanes, mm -hmm. then the training can kick in again. Hello. So it, it just really depends on how amped up he is. Yep. Perfect. Good. It just really depends on how amped up he is, how patient that you'll have to be and how much that you'll have to correct. The main thing is if you know that he's, you know, hyped up already, to not let him greet that person, yeah. right? Give him some time, get him to refocus on you. And then when she's calmed down, then he can meet grandma, right? It might take a while, but it'll be really important. And of course, uh, being on leash will help because yeah. you can help to physically correct. But eventually you want him to get to the point where he's calmed down enough. Good boy. Sit. There you go. Almost. <laughs> Good boy. There you go. There you go. Much better. All right, now we just re now we just repeat that process two more times. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll give you him, and I'll go get the. Uh, you want beanie or mochi? <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, that's true. It's okay. <laughs> Good girl. Okay. Who's that? Down, down. Mochi. I keep looking at her parents because she's giving her the wind. <laughs> Mochi. So go ahead and stand there again because we. Oh, yeah, she loves you right now. You might want to go ahead and close that. <laughs> And then this will also help with settling them down. And all it is is just compressed air. So when she comes up to you excited, you just press that and that'll help to kind of alleviate her fixation. Oh, right? 
go behind you beside her you know you didn't have to spray right on her it's just air yeah no it's just air so right now I have no other there you go yeah it good even. there you go there you go right so now invite her to you but if she jumps say yep there you go good good come here now go ahead and pet her while she's still down good there you go and then again she's very excited right come here good girl that's it good there you go okay and then we'll have you <laughs> too excited i know come on good girl okay and then try again to just say hi to her there you go much better then then yep almost so when she starts to jump up go ahead and say no okay. and i would pull her down but unfortunately her her thing is too loose yeah and then her harness is too tight now so she's <laughs> kind of in like the the zero zone for okay. for she gear she has another harness at home um <laughs> but like top loads of these walk um that's usually what i use on her okay we'll, we'll tighten this one up before her mm -hmm. her session go ahead no. and ask her to sit. sit very good there you go she should when they're the calmest they should be able to do this on their own without being prompted to sit you might have to help them especially if you're first getting into the home but you you'll watch as they kind of, the excitement goes down they should start automatically kind of sitting for you for that excitement mm -hmm. when you reach down and bend over if they pop up go ahead and correct them yep sit good there you go <laughs> Her she's, is not <laughs> she's trying so hard good girl i know good girl I'm so small, I forgot how to Good girl. Yeah, she'll come back. And then, good girl. <laughs> yes, very good. Okay, you can see if she'd like a treat. <laughs> she might be too much. There you go. Good girl. Good girl. Actually, that's usually Pablo. Pablo and Beans would never say no to a tree. Yeah, I got you some chicken one because that was her favorite. Those guys will eat anything. I just got you this one because that was her consistently the one that she would work for. There you go. Mochi. Mochi. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Yes, good girl. All right. Ready for Mr. Bean? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then after you put her in, you might want to go ahead and start tightening up that collar again. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Are you excited? Good boy. So same thing. <laughs> so same thing with, uh, so same thing as, uh, Pablo. Yeah, there you go. Good boy, good sit. <laughs> good boy. Here's one for you. And then when he approaches you, go ahead and ask him to sit. That way, big guy. Good. Good. There you go. No. No. If I put your presents there. You can. There you go. Good boy, yes. Yes, there you go. <laughs> he had to warm up. <laughs> Good. So go ahead and ask him to say it again. Say it. Good. There you go. Right? I know. Good boy. Okay. Go say hi. <laughs> Good. Uh -uh. Good. Almost. He's trying. So I guess he's a uh -huh. Sit. Sit. <laughs> Good boy. Come on. There you go. Up here. Give you another one. Should I have to wait for him to stand up and then sit again? Yeah, if he starts going after you. But just go ahead and focus. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sit. Good. <laughs> he's trying so hard. Good try. There you go. Now go ahead and try to get to his side. Almost. <laughs> nope. My face. 
There you go, good. We'll go over how to work on his nails. I can see that. The, the, nail, the nails are really sharp. There you go. Come on, bud. Good boy. Good, there you go. And then as soon as he pops up, go ahead and say no. And then when he's back down on all fours, go ahead and keep heading up. So even if he stops sitting, you can still give him attention until he starts popping. Right there. So don't forget to add the no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Close. A little bit of a more firm no as soon as he pops. Good. No. Close. One more. Good. And now. No. Good. No. And now, almost. You're back to the soft. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Nope. No. Good. There you go. And then ask him to sit again. Sit. Good. There you go. He's trying to give you a paw. Good boy. Not the biting. Oh, yeah. No. Close. There you go. Good sit, though. So you see how he's starting to kind of recover on his own now that he's kind of dying down a little bit? boy. Good job. All right, now I'll go ahead and give him some <laughs> Good. There you go. Good. So I think Beanie will probably give you the most practice, followed by Mochi, and then Paolo is doing the best, which kind of makes Paolo's sense whenever you're training. Yeah. So. Good boy. There you go. Thank you. Good boy. Usually when you go out and meet somebody, if I say no or call him back, he'll come back and sit and then have the person come over here. So. That's why he's kind of used to recalling back this way and doing that when he meets somebody. <laughs> Hopefully he'll do the same with you when you're out and about with somebody. He's meeting me. There you go. <laughs> Good boy, there you go. Good, much better. There you go. <laughs> he went through like three different life stages there. He's like, who are you? I love you so much. Now I'll behave. There you go. Perfect. Good. Very good. Good job. You have any questions? It's just going to be practice from here. And like I said, that's the only time he's really gotten that amped up for anybody. Most with strangers, he just has, sticks to stage one. <laughs> so he's like anxious and not sure. And then when he'll slowly approach them and smell them, you know, it's a lot easier to have him sit for a treat. So he doesn't really have the jumping problem, except for close family and friends, probably. But then you'll at least be able to kind of prompt them and walk them through it. Alright. I'll let you go ahead and load him up. You see after that initial freak out how he how he really calms down. So your your goal is to kind of not make him stress out even more when he's at that state, but just to remain calm and composed and just let him know that, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of. And just go nice and slow and easy, give him treats, give him breaks, and he's good. Boy, yeah, we're talking about chewing. So, what you want to do is just do slaloms around the cones, so that way you get used to going left and right and him getting used to following you. You can ask him to place, sit and stay. You could also drop it and then have um, him come to you after you move back a short distance. And then we'll do a real world kind of walk around the, the old sack here. The, the goal here is for you to just kind of get used to it. This equipment I chose for you because it's going to be very consistent because every time that he pulls hard enough, it will activate it. But we've given him plenty of opportunities here. Yeah. And so 
like what I'll do is when he pays attention to me and he's just following me with that nice heel, I'll count anywhere from three to five times and then I'll give him a treat or a reward. So that way you're not doing it every time, but you're helping to promote him to consistently kind of check in on you and maintain that focus. <laughs> he's following you. <laughs> yeah. Here, I'll move back a little bit. Once you start treating him, he'll, he'll get the idea. There you go. There you go. So two. There you go. <laughs> Perfect, there you go. <laughs> and the good part about the equipment is that it doesn't do anything unless, there you go, right? There's that tension. Because before you really had that problem when he started pulling, he would just keep doing it, right? Now if he pulls, there's gonna be a consequence. So that's why it's really important that you don't you you don't pull it yourself, right? You just kind of get used to calling him to follow you, right? As opposed to using the leash as uh, that tool. Because you just want the leash to kind of uh, to only activate when he messes up, as opposed to you pulling on it, you know, and activating it, unless you're practicing leave it or something. Very good. Place. Yep. Place. Yep. Go ahead and gesture up onto there for you. Place. There you go. Okay. And you can go ahead and drop the lead if you want. Yeah. I don't know if it's okay. You can do uh, you know, whichever you want, and then almost. Good. Now go ahead and release them to you. Yeah. Just calm, beanie, anything. Okay. I don't know. When I went to train, the main thing is. <laughs> no, it's whatever comes natural to you. Like if you didn't want him to to stay, you know, just usually tell him to stop or stay there. Um, and then whenever you want him to come to you, just gesture for him to come to you or call him to you. Right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you can go ahead and reset him if you want. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Sorry, I, I ran out of blue. <laughs> Good, there you go. Good. Yeah, just keep him to one side, and if he's about to move, use the leash to make sure that he can't go past that point. Okay. So you just have to keep the leash shorter, like it, as if he was in a heel. Good, there you go. This will be a little bit easier too when I'm not here distracting him as well. He gets used to just following you. Good job. Perfect. Good. So when he's about to move is when you would go back in and reinforce to stay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. And, there you go. Good. Okay. Okay. Now don't move too far this time. Just go very slow. There you go. Perfect. There you go. Good. That's how you're going to correct him. It would be harder for him because he's still a puppy and he wants to be near you, but that's perfectly fine because that's what we worked on with the leash part. Like yeah. <laughs> and then you can even uh, have him follow you without the leash as well. Okay. Good. Good practice for you. There you go. There you go. Good. And that's the touch, right? If I wanted him to heal on one side, I'd put my hand down there. And then as soon as he got there, I'd give him a treat too afterwards. 
<laughs> okay. Good. Very good. There you go. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> you might get stuck again. <laughs> Alright, you have any questions on it? <laughs> It'll take some getting used to, right? <laughs> Go ahead and um, we'll walk on the sidewalk with the grass and everything there to kind of give his nose something. And then that'll be a little bit more realistic, right? Because he's going to get distracted. So all you have to do is just concentrate on where you want to go. And then the leash will do the work for you. It says if you need extra help, you can call him back to you for a treat. Yep, there you go. And it's the same thing, right? And this is where we talked about that balance between him being able to be a puppy and explore and smell stuff. Yeah. And then actually still recognize and respond to you when he actually, you know, hits the end of the leash instead of continuing to pull. Yep, so now it's up to you. Do you want him to stay and smell or do you want him to move on? There you go. Oh, good boy. Good boy. I was mostly trying to get this around. Exactly where it was. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't even yeah, it's, to direct him anywhere. It's a little bit on the loose side intentionally, you know, because if it's too tight, you know. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of cold until I could move along with <laughs> Very good. <laughs> you can always just keep walking and have him like heal. That's what I'll do is like I'll just kind of put it to the side there and he kind of sees. So that way he keeps moving instead of just sitting. There you go. <laughs> Pablo's like, when is it my turn for treats? <laughs> I could do that too, Mom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you have any questions? <laughs> no. Okay, I'll go ahead, you go ahead and we'll swap out. Same thing here, because we only want it to annoy him when he's pulling, <laughs> right? We're going to concentrate on him following us for the treats and guiding them. No. Good, there you go. Alright, so go ahead and start with uh, some size and then you'll kind of see as soon because he, yeah, he, he walks a lot faster, right? He's a lot more excited, but... Um, Visit my sister. She was in Norfolk, that's medical school. Oh. And she was holding him. He saw me and he dragged her in the rain. Oh. Skidded her entire leg. Poor thing. There you go. You might need to shorten the, the yeah. leash too. Good. There you go. Perfect. Yep. So once again, you know, just kind of making sure to give him that reward or that uh, praise whenever he's paying attention to you. And letting, yeah, he's gonna hit the, he's gonna hit the boundary a lot more, but you can see at least he's now more responsive to when he hits that boundary, right? So it's gonna be still a little bit of a process for him to get where Beanie's at, but he's, he's gonna get there. There you go, good. Good, there you go. He wants to get on the mat because that's how he gets treats. He wants to get on the mat because that's how he gets treats. <laughs> Good boy. There you go. He's like all the smells. Does he not stay? He does a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the long ways he fits a little bit better. Yeah. Huh? I know you know 
<laughs> yeah, it might just be awkward because he's about yeah. to hang over that ledge, but usually he'll lay down the other way. There you go. <laughs> I, you could break them up too. I'm trying to. I'm like, <laughs> trying to do it. I'm like, awkwardly, like, wait a second. <laughs> Come on. Good, there you go. <laughs> That's okay, there you go. It's where, so this is where that leadership comes in. So if you want him to go with you, then you just start showing him where to go. Okay. Right? But if you want him to kind of stay and smell things, then you let him stay and smell things. Probably. You're going to have to kind of start working on that balance. And you don't always have to call him each time. The leash should do most of the work for you. But if you did want to call him to help, then that's fine. But uh, just understand that he should be responding to you off the leash pressure. And then you just have to kind of give him that praise, like, good boy, when he, you know, does that, right? Or pays attention to you again. Well, you look angry. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Enough times. Give me a treat. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, yeah, every like three to five times right now, so it's still pretty um pretty a lot, yeah. Because I want them to kind of feel rewarded because they're constantly there you go, good. That's that's one, two, good boy. And then three whenever he looks at you again, good three, right? And it just helps to continue to encourage them as opposed to like going too long without giving them a reward for constantly getting them to kind of peel off what they want to do and follow you. It can become very discouraging. Oh, he's just getting a little jumpy. Good boy. Good job. I can't say that I'm surprised that he's doing the most retreats. <laughs> yeah, he likes the treats. He loves recalling to the mat for treats. That was the easiest out of all of them. And would you just say, like, place? Or... Yeah, it's calm or place. And it's mostly where you're pointing, right? So if he's just free roaming, you want him to just come to you, just have him gesture down to you. Or if you want him to place on the bed or on the sofa, you just place. <laughs> There you go. Got a little distracted there. Very good. There you go. Go ahead and do some real world on the on the actual sidewalk. He naturally walks a lot faster, so it's gonna take him some time. Yeah. <laughs> It's gonna take him some time to get used to, but that's why, like I said, I like the bungee yeah, lead. I like to call him with my sister because my sister's five foot not nine, five foot two. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Good, there you go. Maybe. <laughs> He's like, hi. <laughs> He did great. Yeah, no, I always felt bad that he accident. had to be the last one. <laughs> yeah, he never has accidents. Well, if he ever has an accident, how do you know you're too long? No, um, he's, just, he's sick. Oh. Yeah. The only time he ever had an accident was when he had like diarrhea like, for like two weeks straight and was, a while ago, and then I switched his glue to, um, like before it was Royal Canine, but during the pandemic, Royal Canine stopped taking a lot of their food. So when he's coming back at you too, I've found that just giving him those butt scratches or some attention is really good as well uh, as the treats are kind of just kind of inter interchanging them. <laughs> good, there you go. Mochi is death me. Mochi's like, I can do that too, kind of.
Cool. Yeah, he's. They're pretty like used to pulling on on their collars and harnesses. Yeah. So at least we're kind of starting them off fresh with this new gear. And yeah. your your job will just be to kind of keep it consistent, keep it rewarding, make it so it's not so frustrating for them. You know, that's the the biggest thing that kind of took a while was just the fact that like, especially with the other thing, right? Uh, because had dogs before that you know their parents try to use things like that and they start pulling and they freak out because of it and then they keep pulling to go away right so you really have to condition the behavior to pay attention to you to come back to stop pulling or else they can you know kind of go downhill like if he gets agitated because this thing on his face but then he pulls away and then it causes more right yeah so really trying to make sure that he understands the pressure stops as soon as he pays attention to you and where you're going to yeah, so then and then it just starts again um, and what um sorry what? his triggers when it comes to other dogs i guess we didn't discuss that yeah we'll discuss that um when we do like the the social session but for the most part it's just the fact that he seems uh unsure so he'll seem his initial reaction is very good just like beanies like he's does the sit thing and lay down he's excited yeah. he wants to meet them and with the muzzle on and i got the couple of options for you on that too um he's really good with the smaller dogs some of the bigger ones he's kind of scared of and so he he'll 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 go from <laughs> he'll, he'll go from like excited to meet the dog to like suddenly very unsure and scared Pablo. and that's where he gets that snappiness Pablo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's where he gets that snappy behavior from yeah so especially with newer dogs i give him plenty of time to get used to them and smell them and be around them before engaging and then he also starts to amp up again when dogs play right especially if he's still unsure or even if he is with like beanie and fiona when they're playing tug he would get really really worked up too either out of concern or just the fact that they're playing without him and he would want to kind of either jump in or snap at her or you know kind of either protect his brother but also didn't like the the intensity right so he's He's one of those, like, if they're calmer and smaller, maybe perfectly fine. But if they're bigger and louder or more, you know, anything to offset, upset his, like, un insecurity already, because he's already unsure. So anything to kind of press that past the issue is pretty much his trigger. Okay. Uh, I can see him smelling. <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute. So with Mochi, she's naturally better at responding to the traditional leash pressure mm -hmm. than her brothers. But the idea is still the same, right? Just making sure she doesn't consistently pull away. Yeah. Let her know which direction mm -hmm. that you're going to. Okay. Yep. Yeah, whatever you want to do. So if you want her to follow you instead of pulling her because she's unsure, try to release that tension on the lead and then just try to jet, uh, to kind of calmly call her over to you. And then get, there you go. Because with her, a lot of her issues are, are mostly because of her apprehensiveness, right? So many times when we try to get her to do something, that's actually the part that's upsetting her or scaring her and making it harder to do it <laughs> right <laughs> so it's it's really uh she's really one that you have to kind of be very mindful of your behaviors when you're working with her but if so long as you're very calm and gentle with her then she's really good with kind of just responding and going with you good there you go and same thing too you don't always have to call her she should be able to kind of respond back on that leash pressure there you go good and then just say good we're oh, okay. 
just uh, give her that praise or that attention again when she does do the right thing and pay attention to you. That's all. At least the wind has stopped for a minute. So try to go ahead and get down lower and I'll call her over to you. There you go. She's a very sensitive soul because she's already apprehensive of you a little bit it makes it even harder for her to want to come to you and so when you end up forcing it you end up kind of scaring her and making her want to stay back more which is really going to be the hardest dynamic for you <laughs> i think if you just spend a couple of days with her and just kind of just hang out with her and let her get used to you need you both to just be the good cop with her, especially because of her personality. Yeah. Right? Girl, it's okay. Come on. Hey, girl, there you go. I'm like, Ohio. At least now this gives you the, the opportunity to kind of become Mochi's best friend. Realistic, but oh, <laughs> see, you gotta you gotta start with the mindset though. Yeah, you, you gotta be like, yeah. There you go, good. Hey, girl. <laughs> so now, when she pays attention to you again, go ahead and give her that praise and see if she'd like a treat. There you go, good. There you go. Very good. Call her back over to the obstacle course in the car. <laughs> Come on, I'll go with you. She's like, this wind. <laughs> Especially because her hair is on and gets in her face. Good girl. So see how she's, she's super responsive mm -hmm. to the leash pressure? Very good. There you go. I think with her, it's just going to be mostly you, you repairing your bond with her, and that's going to, like, that's going to fix... That's horrible that's, my dog. No, that's going to fix everything else, yeah. though. That's all it is, really. At least from what I see. And uh, her social behaviors, we're definitely going to have to go over on another session, because uh, her apprehensiveness, you know, it just... It can be on another level, like Beanie, a little bit more often, unfortunately, like when you walk out. But then at the same time, when he sees a female, which is very interesting, <laughs> she like really perks up, and then you have to, yeah, and then you have to kind of really work on the on the not jumping part. But with the men, she'll kind of like go around them, <laughs> right? Or yeah, she might want to go hates away. My neighbor. Yeah. I mean, I hate him too. But, oh. Uh, <laughs> she. Good girl. She hates, I mean, she loves my other neighbor though, this old lady. It always gets hot at her. That's good. I think she's got some friends. And we'll kind of have you walk through the course here with her a little bit. Since we already did the natural walking. Good, there you go. So just see how sensitive she is and just try to encourage her to follow you. And then when she does, just try to make it like a really good, like a really big deal. I like that you, you overly appreciate it, right? <laughs> Perfect, there you go. There you go. <laughs> right? <laughs> so that'll happen a lot in public too. So that's why it's gonna be really important that you make sure whatever harness or collar that you get for that it's secure because <laughs> little things like that will happen all the time <laughs> very good so especially in the at first just try to get in that good habit every time you she looks at you and she starts to follow you just to give her that praise and then start to count and then once you get to you know three with her maybe <laughs> then I would just give her a treat okay. right 
so we'll try it together here. I would give her acknowledgement after every single one, right? So I'd be going one way, she'd be going another way. At least she gets tight, she turns around. Yes, good girl, this way. Yes, good girl, this way. <laughs> you get, you can eventually wean off of it, but it's better to kind of do it too much at first than too little because it's really what helps to drive that engagement and that reward for them. There you go, perfect. And then, yes. Perfect, there you go. So like I said, you're on a really over-exaggerated as much as you can for her uh, because she's more on that sensitive side. So she needs she needs that much more enforcement from, reinforcement from you. That was good though. Oh yeah. But that's where you just kind of acknowledge those signals. You know, you don't have to tell, especially with her, you don't want to scold her for it because you're just scolding her for letting, for her letting you know that she's uncomfortable with that situation, right? So it's more so um, comforting her in those scenarios than correcting her. That's where a lot of people will do the wrong thing and then make the situation worse. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and swap to the longer cord. Kind of same as if you were off leash with the other pups, just kind of enticing her to follow you. Uh, you <laughs> Aww. And then once she gets too far away, we'll do the recall. <laughs> oh, I got some more treats here. Hold up. There you go. So let her know that you got one. <laughs> So you can go like that way towards the yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> and you can walk more in the middle of the court or around the, the field there again too if you want. Very good, there you go. Yeah, all this stuff is, is causing it. Let's try to get away from it. Cause, there you go. Very good, so when she starts coming to you, make sure that you, you give her that good girl or that acknowledgement. Good job. Oh, got gotcha. you. <laughs> got gotcha. you. Perfect. There you go. Very good. And all the caller is for is for. A, helping to get her attention when she's too fixated on something else, and then B, actually giving her that consequence so that way she doesn't learn to just ignore you. Uh, so this isn't like a um, beat, right? No, this one doesn't automatically trigger. So this is a... Okay. Okay, because I was wondering when she was walking, I was like, what is she doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so confused. Okay, that makes sense. Nah, this one's just a manual one. I, I feel like she would definitely... Not do well, yeah, with the other one. So that's, like you said, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, they all need their own little little pieces of gear. What I was using for her before was my GPS tracker, which was really good because it just beeps and vibrates, uh, and it's smaller and less clunky than this. But if you find one, there's like ones for smaller dogs online too. That will probably be more ideal for you. It's not too bad or a big or obtrusive, but you can kind of tell it's a little bit, you know, above her weight class. 
very good. I understand. <laughs> go that way away from the cone. to respond to the name then if she does then you beep if she doesn't respond to that then you vibrate and if she doesn't do that then you shock right but she usually like I said nine times out of ten good girl good girl yeah good girl getting down low really helps with her it's it'd be a it could be hard on the knees in the back but that's something that I find that will help too, is just getting to a lower level. Oh, now, now you gotta follow her. Huh? <laughs> there you go. Good job. You got this. Now I'll give you the remote. So you just work your way from the bottom to the middle to the top. But you can always call her name first. You probably won't need it though. So let's just walk back this way. She should just follow you. And then if you need help with the recall, name, beep, vibrate, then consequence. So we can really give her like the, the literally like three strikes, you know. Good. There you go. Perfect. It doesn't have to be a... Mochi hates the so that's why she's <laughs> circling around the car. Oh, that's understandable. Mochi! Good girl. Oh, go ahead again. There you go. Almost. <laughs> go ahead and call her. Come here, Mochi. Good girl. There you go. Something distracted. Might just be like leaves or something. Good girl. Or an animal. There you like go. Oh yeah, I noticed with the birds. Oh yeah, no, there was um a bunny in my neighborhood and she yeah. I could go after it. And one tried to climb a tree and I was like, I don't know what made you oh, think yeah. you could do that. Oh yeah, she's a she's a hunter. There's terriers. Do you have any questions on anything for him? I know it's like I said, it's a lot. I'll kind of let you digest. Yeah, we still I'll have to go over a few probably stuff. ask the same text you questions on yeah. that. <laughs> but at least this will kind of give you an idea of just like the training drills. Yeah. Um, you, of course, don't have to do it three times a day, but at least once, you know, mm -hmm. a day would be really good to kind of keep up mm -hmm. on it, having them kind of follow you around, having the treats 
be like the formal stuff because most of their behavior is going to be when you're kind of out walking anyways right but you don't want to you don't want to train when you're out walking you want to just kind of enjoy that walk with yeah. them um, all right you have any questions before we end the recording and then we'll just go over the rest of the stuff cool just say good paw or just lower it down and he should just naturally go and hit it for you there you go good, then, good boy you get you get a treat from her now he's like well, someone go. needs to give me a treat boy. there you go and that one um just press and hold to record and then oh it, it does have battery <laughs> so, uh, you can make say? one that says treat or outside. Treat? And then when he presses it, <laughs> and then he gets a treat. That's a dangerous game to play right? with a treat. He'll be just sitting here. He gets used to hitting that button real fast, right? But I'll, I'll program that one to outside or anything that you want. The main thing is you do, you might have to kind of either move it closer to you or yeah, try to say it louder. Not in the wind as well. Yeah. That's probably not helpful. Because the, uh, the speaker itself isn't too loud and it's yeah. on the bottom of it. Yeah. So, like, that's a couple things to, to kind of take note of. But yeah. other than that, huh, at least that one still has some batteries for you. That's how you would reset it. You have any questions on it? He's like, are you going to let me hit that? <laughs> we'll do it one more time. <laughs> Good boy. He's like, where's the treat now? <laughs> okay. Well, my hands are freezing. You like to bite my hands. <laughs> Good boy. All right.